when players play hockey and parents you know the feedback they give them to is, is we um, overestimate how great we are and how easy it's going to be and we under and we underestimate the the challenge at, ta- at hand we underestimate how good the league is uh, underestimate the the uh, unknowns the, that's the other thing you're going to underestimate the unknowns that are out there and those are the things that'll knock you on your ass Mm -hmm. um you know for you know things like i'm just gonna say a couple like off the top of my head things like just the size when you go to a um, junior level like the ohl or college you go to college you're you're literally playing against guys four or five uh in college maybe six i'm not sure but four or five years older than you and that's a huge 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 difference so just right then and there it's speed it's power it's strength and it's experience that you don't have as a hockey player the next thing is um the dressing room off ice and that's what got me i was good enough skill wise my first year as a 16 year old i mean i say that i say that not to say that i was the best ever at 16 years old but i'm saying that for the fact that i could play at 16 years old it didn't overwhelm me this the speed and stuff like that um but it was the dressing room and the off ice that got me that i was like okay what's going on here um it was billets it was it was um Oh, I'm just trying to think. There's a whole bunch of things. There's oh, yeah. hazing. Hazing was a thing oh, that it was yeah. like, oh no, we got to do this because you hear stories and they're mostly true, um, which which is uh, which is brutal. Yeah. Um, but not the end of the world. Well, for some guys it was. Um, there's the coach. You know, you go, come from minor hockey where mostly uh, your coaches are friendly and they're mostly, from what I see, um, they're not that gruff don't care because they are still a little bit of accountable to a little bit accountable to parents. Um, they're not professional. So they're, they're more nicer than a lot of people are doing it for, for fun and stuff, but you get to a junior college pro, that's their job. That's their livelihood. And you'd be going to a coach that doesn't actually speak to you. doesn't give you feedback. doesn't feel like helping you because it's not in his best interest. No, it's in his best interest. He doesn't think so, but all he cares about is winning. If you're not doing the job, then you figure it out. There's, yeah. there's not necessarily when you go to that level that someone's there to help you. So that's a, that's something I dealt with that. Oh yeah. There's uh, um, like the, the coaches or the organization, right? You think you're going to a professional organization uh, when you go to the OHL or college and some of them are run really poorly. So if, so how are you going to do it? Like how do you play hockey? Do, mm-hmm. do you, this is the issue, right? Do you quit? Do you, uh, blame? Do you throw excuses like the organization is not very good? Like so, this is why it's very important to understand that you have to overestimate how hard it's going to be. Like even getting drafted or getting a college, overestimate how hard it's going to be. Yeah. Because if you overestimate it, like, well, Eric Wellwood uses an example. His dad said he goes like, if making the NHL was picking up a six hundred pound rock, and you pull and you pick it up and you put pu- pu- uh, pull push it over your head, hold it up over your head. That's what it takes to make the NHL. A lot of people before would say, okay, 600 pound, you know, there's the excuses, the excuses start. Well, that's too much. Why does it have to be 600? Why couldn't it be 400? Well, because it's 600. Um, Well, I almost did it. Okay. So that means you didn't do it. So you're you're not getting there. Overestimate. So you have to train to to maybe lift lift 700. Can you do it? Yeah. It's going to take time and there's a process, right? Um, But people underestimate what that task is. Yeah. And and that's what um, in hockey most people do. And when parents are going through the the system with their kids, the the worst thing they could do is make excuses and, and tell them how great they are. I'm not saying don't tell them they had a great game or you're proud of them and stuff. But the work ethic and the attention to detail is is what's the difference maker. If you can't figure out those details, and you can't figure out the uh, how to um, face the adversity in all different aspects because it's going to come at you and it's just going to come. And there's zero emotions that you have to figure it out if you want to play. Yeah, well, if when you're talking about, you know, it's a, you're lifting a 600 pound rock, the things that contribute to that 600 pounds, it's not just hockey, right? And exactly. That's, and that's what's important about, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I would put my rollerblades on and I lived lived on a dead end. So we had the circle there, right? So I could, I put my net in front of the house, put my rollerblades on, and I used to skate around with an orange ball and I would do the play by play. In my Everybody did, yeah. Of, yeah, of awesome. being on whatever team, doing whatever, winning whatever game and all that. And I think a lot of kids that are they're going into the draft, they're thinking of it like that. Like that's the only part they thought about, right? Like they, they think about, 
oh, like I'm going to play on the London Knights and we're going to win the big game and I'm going to score the big goal and it's going to be awesome and there's going to be all these people and it's and that could happen and that's a good Absolutely. thing that's a good thing to play with in your head because it, yep. it's motivating yep. but that is not even close to all of the things that you need to be prepared to deal with 